Hello friends, welcome back to product and brand management. Up till last time we were wondering on how a product manager thinks about positioning a product, how he actually analyzes on the differentiating elements and how he differentiates or tries to differentiate a product, especially in those cases wherein products are not so much differentiable. And we talked about salt and those kind of examples were also you know mentioned about. Now we would be going a step ahead in terms of looking at the life of a product. And many marketing thinkers, philosophers like Raymond Vernon, Theodore Leavitt most of all and several others, Philip Kotler and very eminent personalities in the field of marketing, all the professors and academicians and, and non-academicians also. So they have contributed at length in terms of this concept. There have been several, several researches since years, I think it was around 1960s, 65 or uh, something, uh, yeah, 65 uh, paper by Theodore Leavitt was published and I have given references of that paper here in this discussion as well. And then Raymond Vernon also talked about product life cycle at the, almost at the same time and several others. So, so if we look at, you know, at the, the time span of this kind of, uh, you know, a discussion going around this concept, it is almost 55 years or so. So, 56 years plus. So, you see that is the time uh, people with lots of intelligence and experience have spent on this kind of a concept and uh, that is why it is one of the most important elements of our understanding about a product. You would have gone through people who would have studied marketing management uh, or, or marketing, they would have gone through this concept anyways. But let us look at you know our concern through the eyes of uh, the philosophers who have contributed on product life cycle. So, let me take you through a brief discussion on uh, the elements related to PLC. You see, but uh, I would suggest that look at this, you know, beautiful picture of two uh, lines blue and red, wherein one is profits and the other is actually the sales. And I will come back to you know uh, all the associated aspects of you know product development, introduction, growth, uh, maturity, and decline, and then uh, you know uh, some uh, academicians or or uh, industry people they have sort of given different you know uh, connotation to the names here, but but largely these are stages. Now just pick up a pen draw this graph on a piece of paper and, and just simply draw you know this curve and especially the sales one and then think in terms of let us say a dant manjan tooth powder think you know just just fundamentally take it as a product. Now in today's parlance if we look at where do you find a tooth powder, is it here somewhere or according to you it, it might be somewhere here or some of you might feel that this is somewhere here. So, so let us let us not give it a name as of now, let us just think in terms of you know uh, tooth powder as a product. Then go for Dabar Dant Manjan. Now we are giving it a name actually. So where do you find it? Do you find it somewhere here? Kind of. I'll try to differentiate colors whenever required. But but as of now, you know the the, the uh, you know uh, disfigured square can be seen as Dabar Dant Manjan here. Or I'll just mark D for example. Now see, can we can we look at it here somewhere? Or should we go ahead? or should we come back slightly in terms of sales or, or and I am talking of in terms of you know the growth 
it, it's not that you know uh, the the sales is declining or rising. Probably Dabur Dalmanjan still has to go a long way in terms of the kind of customers they have to achieve. So so we can look at it somewhere, or some of you might might market somewhere else also. So let's let's start doing this exercise. Let's keep doing this exercise. Then you know think of a newspaper any newspaper and, and uh, you know uh, let me think of changing uh, the color now now let's let's look at newspapers so where where would you mark newspapers in today's era of internet and virtual mode would you be marking newspapers somewhere here can, can you see this mark you probably can and and would you be marking newspaper somewhere here some of you might think of marking those here as well. And if I say Dainik Jagran as a newspaper and just to remind you it has been and it is one of the largest read newspapers in the world and, and definitely in India. So, where would you put Dainik Jagran and incidentally these are two D's. So, the red D is Dabur and green D now would be Dainik Jagran. So, where would you put it? You, you would put it somewhere here in, in you know in consonance with the earlier dot and then do not mind my handwriting it is not, it's not so good. So, and then uh, would you mark you know the D here or again some of you would like to mark it on you know a different level. So, where would you like to do that? Keep doing that you know just just uh, you know kind of uh, think by yourself that where would you like to put that mark actually. Now, let us think in terms of a scooter for example. Now, uh, I would not suggest uh, that you keep you know Honda Activa kind of scooters as scooters or no it is your choice you can think in think in uh, terms of you know imagining scooter by yourself. So, so if you are looking at uh, you know Honda products in terms of scooters as pure scooter category so, so definitely I would invite you to do that and it is entirely your choice. So, think in terms of uh, putting you know scooter somewhere or let me change the color somewhere you know once again. So, I would choose now yellow let us think in terms of putting scooter. So, would would you be putting scooter somewhere here or, or you still put it somewhere here you know it is for example, we keep you know uh, today's scooters under consideration. So, is it the suitable dot we are putting here. Now, let us make it slightly more interesting let us look at Bajaj scooters where would you put Bajaj scooters? They exited Bajaj scooters uh, you know quite some time back. So, would you be putting them somewhere here kind of you know probably you can see this yellow dot I am drawing in, uh, for, for you. Now, let us look at Bajaj two wheelers. So, probably you would like to put them you know I would be putting a B here for Bajaj somewhere. So, so you know close to the other D's. So, would you be like uh, you know would you be putting these uh, B this B somewhere near the D's and this exercise can interestingly be done almost with different kinds of dimensions with different kinds of perspectives while thinking in terms of no names associated with the product while thinking in terms of names associated with the product while thinking in terms of dissociating product and just thinking in terms of the name which the product carried. So, these kind of 2 3 scenarios can be built up in, in you know in due course of time for example, mopeds now and I will not mark it for you, but, but just just to give you a clue for example, where would you like to put mopeds now. I am sure that, that that would be on the right side in a uh, deep down somewhere and then would you be like to uh, you know would you be putting TVS moped somewhere near to that. 
then if I say just put Luna somewhere, the name and I am not talking of a moped, just the name, where would you be putting that name somewhere on this trajectory? It, it would be diff, you know it would be difficult for you to put up just a name basically because this is a product's life cycle, it is not a brand life cycle and that is the first lesson which we should keep in mind that we are talking of a product life cycle here and we should although the name of the product and the name of the brand get gels with each other uh, you know uh, you know it, it gels with each other in due course of time but when we dissociate these and the product is no more name still remains i'll be talking about that later on in brand management discussion and we'll be wondering on you know what to do with that name why should that name remain at all and can uh, can we do something about it or, or uh, if, if name remains then why why do the products die at all you know why why do they exit and why do they vanish so we will be keeping that that uh, scope for ourselves uh, you know uh, on on the discussion points to discuss uh, you know these elements later on but but still this is an exercise which has to be done uh, at this particular moment for example tvs now TVS has other products as well, but I am just talking of TVS mopeds and dissociating mopeds from TVS. So, that can be done. And then, you know, Hero Puk, again a moped, but then dissociating Hero Puk from a moped. So, so that this kind of an exercise will enable us to understand a product's life cycle and a product with a brand name you know that kind of a life cycle perspective and when the brand name remains and the product gets eliminated and brand gets you know it gets you know, it traverses into a different kind of a product that also can be understood and later on as I said we will be trying to understand that if product gets eliminated just the name remains in our memories what can be done about it that that can uh, also be an interesting discussion so but we will be focusing on product elements right away so this is you see this is very interesting many a times it is confusing because imagining products without names and putting those under trajectories is is not a common kind of an exercise wherein you say that plastic as a product plastic bottles as a product it's it's an easy thing to say you, uh, you you can say that you know staplers as a product then you can say kangaroo staplers as a product so so those kind of things you know slightly add on value in terms of when you put up names for example you say you say sorry boots then then you put a name to those boots and then you know boots are a category of shoes now then you say sneakers and you put nike for example then it's it's altogether a different kind of thing and then then, then you, you say that okay Reebok also wants to look at their sneakers and they want to uh, you know put up uh, themselves somewhere in terms of their sneakers on this product life cycle graph. So, that is again a slightly different kind of uh, thought process which Reebok has to go through as against what Nike would go through and their product and brand managers would think differently when they are thinking in terms of their own life cycle graphs. So, that is what you have to understand. So, first think in terms of product product with names, then names which have traversed into different products and lastly names without products that is products which have vanished. Just keep this scenario in mind, keep thinking about it, read as much as you can. This is a very important concept which has been followed as I have been telling you since quite some time now and let me take you further through the discussion on product life cycle. So, you know just just I will pause here for a while just to reiterate that what we have discussed you know two D's and then you know kind of B and so on. Now you see as I was saying why have you marked the names wherever you have. Now let us ponder upon the reasons actually on marking the names wherever we have because you feel so you think that you know this is where this product would be and I am not again reiterating the scenarios you can think in terms of scenarios while answering these questions or while thinking loud on these questions actually. So, 
you feel so or you see so means you are observing it happening somewhere around. For example, you are watching that you know it is uh, getting away. For example, black and white televisions got away in due course of time and people observed that and people used to discuss that you know. So, so that was the time when people were observing that kind of a thing basically. So, black and white television as a product got away and today probably we have names which were associated with black and white televisions and after few years or so we might not remember those names as well. This also happens in many cases although names they have a longer longer life we will be talking about that. So, then the third reason might be that you foresee the future of a product that is why you have marked it somewhere because you can imagine that this is how this should be in times to come. So, you feel so, you see so, you foresee the future you imagine or you have an experience associated with the logic you give uh, on, on foreseeing the future. And again very important element you have known the past you have been observing that product since quite some time basically you have been growing on the thought of that product basically. Now, we have categorized events as products for example, 5 day cricket traversing into one day format then traversing into IPL format you know kind of. So, so you have been watching that since your childhood you have been a cricket fan and you have been watching cricket as an event as a product traversing into forms basically. And then, then branding expert aspect comes in later on but, but just look at that as an event. You, you would have uh, you know thought of several movies also you would have thought of several songs also you know songs with with the different kind of you know music associated with them then you have the same lyrics and you have imposed you know uh, you know kind of you know uh, the, the technical term might be different you have put up a different kind of a tune on that song basically. So, and then there is another reason that you are actually looking at two competitive products. And when I say competitive products we can have the uh, you know closely linked substitutes and we can think in terms of alternatives as well that is need satisfied by something which is quite different as compared to that kind of a product we have already talked about this. So, this is where you know uh, we come to uh, 5, 6 categories on you know what kind of reasons might we carry in mind while we are putting those and remind just to remind you that product managers and brand managers they have lots of insights and data and AI supporting that they have lots of marketing research supporting that. But as of now I am just talking of you and me you know without any data support or with, without any marketing research. So, I am just talking of putting up a logical point of view while doing that exercise just to you know just to show a glimpse once again what we have done or, or probably I have done presuming that you would have done the same way. Now, let us come back to the fundamentals once more. Why do we say cycle product life cycle? Many times students they ask me different kinds of uh, questions and then philosophers and thinkers they have already written a lot about that and we discuss these kind of things in classes. So, whenever and then this is this is almost you know a fundamental kind of a process as well whenever you have to understand a concept revisit the roots of that concept or the dictionary meaning of that concept or the interpretation as given by the dictionaries and the definitional frameworks of uh, related to that concept. So, I went to Merriam Webster dictionary and, and Merriam Webster dictionary talks about cycle in terms of an interval of time during which a sequence of a recurring succession of events or phenomena is completed. So, a sequence of recurring succession or events of or phenomena is completed in a particular interval of time. So, time and events that is what you know uh, cycle connotation comes in and what we have seen we have seen product life cycle with a sequence of a recurring succession of events that is sales for example. 
and they have given example in the dictionary you know that a four year cycle of growth and development and, and uh, that is what we are talking of. Now, second element which they have mentioned is related to a course or series of events or operations that recur regularly and usually lead back to the starting point. So, you go to the full circle and you see I will be talking about this very, very briefly, but, but again when we talk of a product it goes for a decline then what happens after decline and uh, keep that thing in mind that I have mentioned you that the name remains. So, I will be picking up that note somewhere later on when I will be talking of the brand, but, but again when the product declines what happens need still remains and remember we have talked about all these concepts earlier. So, need still remains now that need that need gets satisfied either through a substitute or through an alternative and that is where it is called cycle perspective. Now, another very important and interesting element given by you know the dictionary on cycle is one complete performance of a vibration electric oscillation current uh, you know alternation or other periodic periodic process for example. And and then a, a very interesting thing again which comes to us is a permutation of a set of ordered elements if you see that graph once again in which each element takes the place of the next and the last becomes the first and you see that is where uh, our fundamental uh, you know insight gets built upon product life cycle. Then we have several examples associated with you know products which are no more there neither in the form or matter that is that is an interesting thing, but usage need has been taken over by something else for example, you know that is uh, you know uh, the need is still to be satisfied for example, cassette recorders, tape recorders have you, have you seen those in recent times uh, many of you would have seen those. And, and uh, you see there were there were small cassettes there were big cassettes and so on and and uh, uh, you know uh, that was a music enabler for us basically and and then today we have downloadable music actually and you can download it on your mobile phones just put up a wonderful headphone with lots of you know capacity and it gives you uh, you know uh, the complete satisfaction floppy disks for example they have traversed into something else now so, so products which are no more there neither in the form nor matter. Then products which have changed the form cathode ray television moving into LCD which has moved into TFT then LED then OLED and so on and then probably you know technology would enable something else and then you see. So, but that display device is there, but the form has completely changed. For example, bulb, so tungsten to tube light to CFL to LED and again it is moving ahead and LED again is changing a form in a different manner that now they have mobile application enabled LED bulbs which can change color as per your discretion. So, you do not have to have many colored LEDs for your color you know requirements. So, so that can be and then, then you can create different kinds of you know frequencies in the light uh, bulbs which, which can you know switch off switch on at a different frequency level also and it get dim as per your choice. So, that is the kind of mobile application enablement has done to as far as our uh, you know lighting goes. For example, at this moment I am standing in a uh, studio wherein you know I have lights over my face. Now, if you put those kind of mobile application enabled LEDs here you can just you know raise the intensity and you can dim those as per your choices in due course of time. So, that can also be done. Products that never change now again it is a very interesting thing never change means they have they are going on and on basically. So, that means they are on a growth trajectory if, if you have to conclude that way for example, matchbox, matchsticks same since ages we have seen that 
although you know kind of a uh, slight difference in as far as the size goes but but i don't find that difference as far uh, you know uh, as much also in, in due course of time stapler stapler is is a product which i you know kind of wonder about when it's going to change actually finally when when probably we would stop using papers at all so so probably that would be the time you know and pencils going on and on and who on this earth for past many decades since the pencil came in has not used pencil probably almost everyone probably and and if you will just go to you know uh, you know some uh, searching some internet uh, sites you would re realize that there are hundreds of pencil manufacturing organizations in this world drill bits dumbbells duct tape and and i have given you a reference of uh, you know popular mechanics this is a wonderful website go there and watch for yourself you know what kind of product development is going on around us how frequently different products are changing in different categories and how products are not changing at all you see let's revisit product life cycle perspective once again and then and and this uh, definition i have fetched from chandrasekharan d and telus gj 2011 a paper called getting a grip on the saddle chasms or cycles journal of marketing and uh, you know this paper has taken the reference from another paper which is also mentioned here you know golder peter n and gerard j telles 2004 going going gone cascades diffusion and turning points of the product life cycle marketing science uh, and and uh, uh, and you can you can check both the references but i have picked the definition which is given here from chandrasekharan and telles paper published in 2011 so the definition says a product refers to a group of brands that are close substitutes and fulfill a distinct need from the consumers viewpoint and you see that is precisely what we are talking of here several names are associated with one kind of a product so if product ties names would still remain or product would change form names would still remain and so on so i have already described that kind of a scenario in front of you and i, I was just wondering on you know what happens actually and we we, we keep on doing that in, in you know marketing and product ma and brand management this is what we have been doing actually because we want to foresee we want to forecast we want to take decisions we want to decide on where to go so that is the perspective you see and and that is what precisely uh, i am trying to put up and i'll end this discussion exactly here wherein i would suggest that cyclically a product may decline but do brands also i don't think so that it's very common for us to feel or say that brands decline so uh, and and i'll be starting my next discussion from uh, you know the perspective of theodore levitt on product life cycle and and i will be elaborating on those elements which levitt has mentioned in in, in his pivotal paper which was published as i said in 1965 and then i will be taking you uh, through a structured perspective on product life cycle given in philip kotler's marketing management and then i will be taking you through the different stages of product life cycle in my subsequent uh, discussion in the next session keep thinking till then and keep exercising you know keep uh, not physical exercise just just keep putting marks on the product life cycle graph as i tried to suggest imagine different kinds of products and combinations and brands there and and you know choose something from uh, consumer products choose something from you know patanjali's products choose something from levers products and so on and and i'll come back to you till then goodbye